Summary of the Freedom Writer's Diary by Erin Gruwell Erin Gruwell starts her career as an English teacher at Long Beach, California's Wilson High School in 1994. During this time, there are more race conflicts than ever before. In 1992, officers from the Los Angeles Police Department were found not guilty of beating Rodney King, an unarmed black man, very badly. After the court's decision, there were six days of violent rioting as African Americans vented their long-held anger over the way the police treat them unfairly and abuse them. All of the area was shaken up by these riots, which made racial relations worse and led a young woman named Erin Gruel to decide to become a teacher. She wants to help young people deal with their anger in non-violent ways, so she chooses to teach at a school that is known for having a lot of different races and classes of people. Even though the school is not in a dangerous area, many of the kids who go there come from places where gangs fight and drugs are sold. Erin tries to make the classroom a place where race and culture don't matter during her first year as a student teacher. But she soon finds out that racial issues are real when one of her students draws a racist cartoon of Sherrod, an African-American student, with big lips that stick out. When Ms. Gruel sees this picture, she loses her anger and tells her students that this kind of labeling leads to terrible things like the Holocaust. She soon finds out, though, that most of her kids don't know what the Holocaust was. So, she chooses to use this as a chance to teach about tolerance. The next year, she gets a new group of students, freshmen who have been labeled at risk, unteachable, and no one else wants. She realizes that her main goal will be to give these rejects, who have been left by most of the adults around them, including, often, their own parents, a sense of self-worth. She also has to deal with the sharp racial rivalries that split the classroom. Students break into Latino, Asian, African American, and white groups based on how they look. These divisions show how the gangs are split up by race. They also show that for many of these students, staying with their own race is a matter of life and death, a way to stay safe in the hood where racial violence is always a threat. Ms. Gruel picks books that reflect her students' lives so that they can see how much they have in common with each other and become more interested in their schoolwork. When she starts teaching her class about the history of ethnic violence around the world, focusing on the stories of Anne Frank in the Nazi-occupied Netherlands and Zlata Filipovi in war-torn Bosnia and Herzegovina today, her students find that they can relate to the things these young girls wrote about in their diaries. They learn that dividing people by race can lead to terrible wars and genocides. At the same time, when Ms. Gruel makes them write their own diaries, they see for themselves how important writing in a diary can be because it often helps them deal with the hard things that happen in everyday life. Many students' diaries describe lives that are eerily similar to in Frank's and Zlata Filipovi's violent worlds. Some students think that because gang violence is so common in their areas, they are more likely to be shot before they turn 16 than to graduate. Others tell scary stories about being abused at home, being homeless, or growing up in a home where one or both parents left them. These complicated facts leave strong impressions on the students' minds and often make them believe they are doomed to fail in school and spend the rest of their lives in a world full of poverty, violence, and death. Over the course of a few months, though, with Ms. Gruel's help, they become more interested in their studies as they learn more about the Holocaust. Students become dedicated to spreading in Frank's message of ethnic tolerance and peace through activities like group projects, field trips to museums, and even meeting Holocaust survivors. When they hear about other people's struggles, they realize that violence isn't always the answer and that words can have strong, life-changing effects on them and on others. The mood in class starts to change when students learn that they have a lot in common despite their different races and cultures. Slowly, they grow closer together and put more faith in the passion and knowledge that their dedicated teacher shares. Even though Erin Gruel has been successful at improving her students' social behavior and academic performance, some teachers still don't like her new ways of teaching. During her four years at Wilson High School, she has to fight with members of the school staff to prove to them that she should stay with her group of students. These teens need the stability and comfort that her classroom provides in order to grow as confident students and people. In the end, 
she and her friends are able to make sure that her plan to teach these teens who were previously unteachable works, and she is able to stay with her class. She gets two extra jobs at Nordstrom and the Marriott Hotel to pay for the kids' field trips and new books. The kids' lives change during their second year. When Ms. Gruel plans a toast for change activity, in which each student gives a speech about how they want to change and become a better person, the class is very inspired by the idea that they have a clean start and can take charge of their lives. Most of them take advantage of this chance to change their behavior and, most importantly, find the courage to believe in themselves. In doing so, they show everyone who told them they were doomed to fail that they were wrong. When Ms. Gruwald gives her students the task to write letters to Zlata Filipovi, her class gets so excited about the idea of getting in touch with this young girl that Ms. Gruwald soon finds herself sending these letters to Zlata and asking her to come to California. When Zlata says yes, the students finally get to meet this young writer they've read and really liked. They find out that she is a young girl just like them, but that she has turned her hard life into a chance to learn and grow. After Zlata tells them about the risks of racial hate, they get to meet another of their heroes, Meep Gies. Meep worked for and Frank's father as his secretary. She was an important part of hiding and and her family during the war, and she also helped get the young girl's diary published. When one of Ms. Gruel's children tells her that she is his hero, Meep tells him that they are all heroes, each able to change the world in their own way, and each responsible for spreading in Frank's message of peace and tolerance. This lesson has an effect on the children of Ms. Gruel. They start to think that they, too, can make a difference. The following year, Ms. Gruel's class will learn about the past of racial injustice and civil rights in the U.S. They learn about the Freedom Riders, a group of seven black and six white activists who, in the 1960s, took buses in the American South to protest the segregation of public transportation. Even though violent Ku Klux Klan gangs attacked the group more than once, the members didn't pause to put their own lives in danger to fight for what they believed in. Ms. Gruel's students are moved by this brave example of people of different races working together, so they decide to call themselves the Freedom Riders. They promise to fight hatred and injustice for the rest of their lives. After this turning point, the 150 students in Ms. Gruel's class are even more dedicated to their studies and to making the group a good place to be. They plan to make a book out of their diaries so that everyone can read about their lives. John too, a millionaire, gives the class 35 computers so that they can reach their goal and put their comments together in a way that keeps their identity secret. When the Freedom Riders are able to get Richard Riley, the U.S. Secretary of Education, to meet with them in Washington, D.C., this project becomes even more important. Ms. Gruel plans to focus on the Freedom Riders' future during their last year of high school. She wants everyone she teaches to go to college. So, she plans college tours and brings in experts to talk about SAT prep and financial aid so that her students, many of whom are the first in their families to finish high school and go to college, don't feel overwhelmed by the application process. This is a year of hard work and celebration, as these young people realize with wonder that they might finally be able to reach their dreams. During this time, the Freedom Riders also become a big deal in the media. The kids get the Spirit of and Frank Award, which goes to people in their towns who fight against discrimination and prejudice. To get this award, they have to go to New York. At the same time, a local story about the Freedom Riders is reprinted in the LA Times, and the students are suddenly inundated with personal replies to the article and offers from corporate firms to help fund their projects in different ways. Erin Gruel chooses to talk to teachers about her time with the Freedom Riders at National University, Long Beach, after the students have graduated. She stays in the lives of the Freedom Riders even though many of them are having trouble with their new lives. For example, some of them are finding it hard to adjust to college, and others have to deal with new family responsibilities. After these changes, the whole group gets together a year after they graduate to go on a trip to Europe. There, they visit important historical places and recommit to working for peace and equality. Erin Gruel starts the Freedom Riders Foundation a non-profit group that helps young people learn from the Freedom Riders' teaching methods. 
This shows that she has been committed to this project for her whole life. This new place is an option to the safe space the Freedom Riders made in their classroom. It also gives teachers a chance to learn about the teaching methods used by the Freedom Riders so they can use them in their own schools. As more and more Freedom Riders become teachers and role models for young people, it shows how much they want to give back to their own communities. By doing what they do, they hope to show young people in tough situations that they have the power and self-confidence to fight for their own success and, more generally, for the better of their communities as a whole. About the author. Aaron Gruel chose to become a teacher after seeing the riots in Los Angeles in 1992. She wanted to show young people how to deal with anger and rage in different ways. In 1993, she started teaching at Long Beach, California's Woodrow Wilson High School, which is known for having students from many different races and cultures. After she caught a racist picture in her class and found out that many of her students had never heard of the Holocaust, she changed her whole lesson plan to teach tolerance. In the end, she helped her group of 150 at-risk kids do very well in school. Because she cared so much about her students, she turned a class that was split by racial issues into a group that loved history and wanted to make the world a better place. In 1998, when her students finished, she stopped teaching high school and started teaching at California State University, Long Beach. Ruel also made the Freedom Writers Foundation, a nonprofit group whose goal is to teach other teachers about the Freedom Writers method. Under the name Freedom Writers, which was chosen to honor the civil rights leaders who fought against segregation in the American South in the past, Ms. Gruel's students wrote about their daily lives in their diaries, which make up most of the book. By writing, these students found their voices and were able to tell each other about the hard times they had been through. During their four years of high school, their accomplishments were featured in local and national news stories, and they were honored by places like the Anne Frank Center USA for their work against hatred. In 1999, they were able to share some of the notebook entries they had written during their four years of high school. This let the rest of the world learn about their own struggles and successes. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.